If we have too much iron, it accelerates the rate at which we age. And at least 10 to 15 percent of the population has too much iron, which is kind of a surprise. In fact, some people think as many as 40 percent of us have too much iron. The disease is called hemochromatosis, and most of us have never heard of it. And there are two forms of it. One is the hereditary form that has two genes that are positive for hemochromatosis, and the other is a less severe one that has just one gene. People with two genes for that are really sick. They tend to die early. They have problems with liver disease. They get cirrhosis, diabetes, they have arthritis, erectile dysfunction, heart attacks, and strokes. They have cancer, pituitary dysfunction. They have a particular hue to their skin that you can see. That's uncommon, and maybe perhaps one in 250 of us have the double gene for it. So for the rest of us that have that problem, most of the time we don't have any symptoms. And I think it's important that our doctors check to see if we do because it is so common. And if we find it, there are things that we can do. We know that when there's too much iron in our system, that there's a reaction that, that at least us scientists and biochemists know that causes a lot of free radicals to occur. And this happens when iron gets inside the body and it tends to react with the peroxide, the hydrogen peroxide that's there, and it causes very, very dangerous free radicals to form in large amounts. We know that iron deficiency is something that's common in women, and it's a serious problem, and that's because uh, the periods that, w that you have tend to cause a fair amount of blood loss. And during a pregnancy, there's a substantial amount of blood loss, and so in women who are of, childbearing, uh, of the childbearing age, it's common to have iron deficiency anemia. It doesn't have particular profound effects on our bodies and we can take iron to replace it. But in the newborn, it's really important that there's enough iron. And so it's important for women who are pregnant to be sure that they first have their iron levels measured and secondly, if they're low, have iron replaced. And that's why I think all of my patients will get this test and have been getting it for years and a surprising number of people have the problem. Some studies have been done that look at uh, a hormone called hepcidin, which is something that regulates iron levels by increasing the absorption of iron. And some scientists have done some studies to show that when you block this hormone from being present, that it tends to make us lose iron and lower LDL uh, cholesterol. In that case, of course, that's a nice way to keep us from absorbing iron, but if we've got a lot of iron, about the only way that we can get rid of it is by phlebotomy, which means by giving transfusions and throwing the blood away, because that's where the iron is concentrated, is inside of our red cells. So when we lose the hemoglobin that's in red cells, it's an iron-based molecule, that's how we tend to lose it. So we also know that there are a couple of other kinds of cells that tend to hoard iron. One are cancer cells and the other cells that are infected by, by bacteria. That's interesting because we can use that to the cancer's disadvantage. And there's an article on this site on artemisinin that you should look up if you have cancer and you are considering using alternative therapies for it because what it does is when we take uh, the uh, artemisinin into our system, it goes into the cells and in those cells where there's a lot of iron, it forms this reaction that causes the free radicals to occur and it kills the cancer cells. It can also uh, it can kill some of the uh, cells that are infected with bacteria. So it's an interesting way to look at these approaches. So when we're looking at iron uh, in the general population, I think it's important to look to see if we have the problem of the recessive gene because that's what maybe 10, 15, 20 percent of us have. And if that's the case, then we have to be very careful about taking too much iron in, so we don't want to be cooking with pots that are made out of, out of iron, uh, and we certainly don't want to be taking any multivitamins that have a, lo a lot of iron either. And in people who, who have uh, cancer or who have infections, the thought should be, how are we going to do something to make sure that we can uh, take advantage of that extra amount of iron there to try and get rid of the problems that they cause? So iron is something that can be your friend and it's something that can be lethal. And we really need to measure it. And the point of this video is to let you know that you should ask your doctor if you've not had your iron levels measured, that you should do that. It's a simple test, it's not terribly expensive. And if you're one of those people that does have it, 
You certainly want to know it because it can change what happens in your life.